In the Connecticut River, you're going to find falls in many different locations. In Holyoke, there was natural falls, so where the river comes across bedrock, it's going to have a natural drop. We're here in Montague, and we're at what they call the Rock Dam, and it's a small dam of rock uh, just below the larger falls where the Turner's Falls Dam is built. So wherever you saw falls, you would see Native American community, communities over time because the fish, whether it's a river herring, an American shad, or an Atlantic salmon, when they're coming up the river in the springtime, what they're going to do is stage or gather at these falls to try and figure out the route up. So we're here at the Rock Dam, and that's a place where the American shad or blueback herring or Atlantic salmon would come up and they would congregate below the falls to figure out how they're going to get up past the falls and keep going in order to get to habitat to breed. So the Native Americans realized this is a great place to be able to fish. And so you would see settlements, temporary settlements, some of them permanent along the river by the Native Americans. The falls here in Montague, the Native Americans called them Pazumscut Falls, and we're downriver from that. So the Rock Dam here is a much smaller falls. When you head up into downtown Turner's Falls, the falls that are now submerged by the river at the dam were about 50 to 60 feet high. So the Algonquins, who were the native tribes in this area, the Nipmucks, the Patumtucks, the Noratucks, the Agawams, the Waranokos, would use these falls to establish their fisheries. And so in the spring, in May and June, is when you see the big fish runs. So the shad and the blueback herring and the salmon spend most of their life in the ocean. But when the water temperatures warm up and the flows are right, the fish will start migrating up the river. And so the Native Americans knew late spring, early summer was the time to be congregating at these falls. Here in Montague, we know that this was an important settlement for thousands and thousands of years by the Native Americans. And it wasn't just the local Algonquins that came here in the summertime. There's evidence that tribes came from as far west as Ohio. Uh, the Abnakis farther north in New England would come here and there was trading happening throughout the summer season. And the Native Americans actually planted corn beans and other plants on the Montague Plains because again they knew that the soils here were very productive. So a very very important long-term settlement by the Native Americans. Europeans migrated up the Connecticut River Valley and then also west from Boston. And so in the 16th century, the 17th century, mid 1600s, the conflict between Europeans and Native Americans intensified. We call it King Philip's War. Uh, the leader of the Algonquins, Metacom, or Metacom's War, there was a tremendous amount of warfare over two years, much of it in this part of the valley. And Turner's Falls is remembered by Native Americans and Europeans alike as the site of a very, very terrible massacre, where Captain Turner and a group of colonials came and raided the settlement here at Turner's Falls and killed many, many um, Native Americans, including women and children, and that effectively put an end to the most overt hostilities in King Philip's War. So this is a very sad uh, chapter in Native American-European relations and, and represents really the final uh, stage in European colonization of this part of the valley and ended thousands of years of Native American settlement in this part of the valley. So another part of the history of the river here in Turner's Falls is the dam that is farther upstream here at what was the uh, Pazumscut Falls. So the dam has been in place since the 1790s here. So the Turner's Falls Dam, in many different iterations, has been around a very long time. And so the Europeans knew that when you put a dam at a point where the river is dropping, if you block the river, you're holding power back, and so you've got a lot of potential energy there. And so they knew that if they controlled that power, they could turn mills and turn millstones and grind and create power. So if you come here in the spring, um, here at the Rock Dam, you're going to see a lot of shad fishermen, um, and this spot is still a great location for the shad fishery because they're staging. And you'll, uh, you'll have pretty good luck if you come uh, May or June, you watch the reports and uh, come and dip a line, you may be able to get yourself a four or five pound uh, American shad and fillet it up and have a tasty dinner still.